So this morning, getting the 9410R out, we are unhooking the Turbo Max and unloading a new strip till bar. So I gotta get this over to the grain bins. That strip till bar is supposed to be there in about 20 minutes. And of course, we knew this for a while and we waited till now. Now it has been raining all morning. So unfortunately, we're just going to be unloading it and hooking up. I was really hoping to get to try the bar out, especially while the guys from the company are here. But with this rain, that's just not gonna be the case, unfortunately, today. You guys don't have to run. <laughs> All right, guys, so here it is. Now, this is the first time we've ever seen this particular strip so bar. When we ran last year, it was using the same unit, but it was a different bar entirely as far as the delivery system, how the bar folded and all that good stuff. This thing is huge. This is also a 16 row. We were running a 12 row last year, but if you look right there, you can see where this can become a 12 row fairly easy if we need it to become one. But we're gonna try a 16 for now. So the way that this thing is loaded, we've got to use the telehandler and the loader to pick up the tongue so the truck can get out from under it. Dang! Hefty! This thing is hefty. Yep, we need some more air. We had those aired up to 12 PSI and I don't think we're going to go any lower, that's for sure. A lot of tongue weight on this unit. A lot of tongue weight. So this is the old bar that we used last year. It was still here. Um, it left and then came back. We were hoping to use it this fall and unfortunately we just never got the chance to use it this fall. But it is going back now. Uh, this was a three point mount bar. It worked pretty good for liquid, but wanting to run dry, um, we wanted to try our dry rig. So this thing did have some carriage wheels, but they are off, it is ready for shipping. So we are taking it and going to set it up on their trailer for them. They're going to take it back with them since we've got the new bar. This unit, I'm not sure if it's coming in this configuration. I have to ask them guys, but um, this is the same shank, uh, same row unit, basically. This was a very early pre-production model, basically just to test how all that was going to work. And yeah, the units themselves were awesome. All right, so I'm back in a tractor that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to take the Challenger back over to the grain bins where the sheds are. We don't need this tractor anymore. We just had it over here to um, hook up the old strip till bar to send it on its way. I did ask the Overforce guys that is going to be a configuration that's uh, offered in the uh, three point setup like that. Definitely more compact, but it's a lot of weight on the uh, back of your tractor too. So we've got the units pretty well set up, we think. We're gonna put some fertilizer in it. See what happens, see if we can't blow fertilizer through the system. It's too wet to put in the ground today. I mean, as you can see, we've got puddles in the yard and everywhere, but we can at least make sure it is going to work whenever the ground does get fit. So make sure we don't need anything. And when the weather gets fit, we are ready to go. And we need to make sure our tender's gonna reach. It might be tight. Still haven't got this logo off there. Took a paint or heat gun to it and I uh, just didn't get very far. So if anyone has any good ways of taking a wrap off of a truck, dad wants to spray paint it. I think the paint's just gonna run right down that vinyl. But let me know if you've got any tricks. Cause the old heat gun didn't get it done. Oh, well, when you screw up and you buy a seed tender, with a sh too short of an auger, you improvise. Unfortunately, that old scale system, or that old scale approach, it's not very portable. Calibrating. So right now we are calibrating into these catch pans, uh, basically making sure that the scales in that thing, or the, or the rate controller, is actually putting on the amount of product it's saying it's putting on. So up there in the in the monitor, Chris is running this thing. 
basically we've told the monitor we're running five miles an hour. We're going to measure out 40 pounds of product. And then we will weigh it to make sure that we actually have 40 pounds of product. All right, guys, so we have our meters calibrated. Um, I think we are ready to run the bar. Like I said, it's too wet today. But we have a few acres of really gravelly, sandy ground we are going to try tomorrow. So we are going to put it in the ground while they're here to help us set it. I don't think we're not going to be running um, really anything. We're just going to make a few passes in that field to make sure that the bar is good to go. We have 10 days of good weather ahead of us, it looks like, at the moment. So, yeah, we'll, just, we'll be back in the morning. All right, guys, so yesterday you seen us unload this thing, and uh, I figured we ought to like go over what it is and what the concept is and what we're doing with it since it's brand new to the market. I'm here with Garrick Schrader from Unreverse. I guess what, what we got going on here, like I know it's a strip till bar, but like let's, I guess, yeah. tell everybody what the, yep. what the um, concept here is. So, this is our 2030 DT um, Raptor strip till bar. Um, it's a 16 row, 30 inch spacing, um, dual six ton um, dry fertilizer strip till bar. Okay. So, so with strip tilling, what we're doing is we're, we're making a strip that we're going to then plant corn on and we're also fertilizing with it. And this one has dual products so we can we can put two different kinds of fertilizer or dry fertilizer down yep. with it. So what's the, I guess, what's the capabilities of this bar as far as depth? Depth, um, so this unit is adjustable anywhere from six to 12 inches deep. Um, we can also adjust um, you know, pressures, angles, all kinds of things to make the right strip for Depending on the season, yeah, time the of the season, year. what kind of ever kind of conditions you're so in. So with this being to. getting close to planting, I'm guessing now we're going to have more of a mellow berm versus like yep, in the a fall mellow we berm. Um, up. you know, try and firm it down as much as possible, get rid of the air pockets, anything like that, to yeah. uh, make it ready for the planter as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, on the cart, what's the capacity of the of the strip till cart? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's dual six ton tanks. Okay. Um. They are each two section um, per product, so four total sections, and then they also um, are able to do variable rate and um, each is on its own scale pad so we can actually make calibrating really easy and see how much yeah. is in each tank individually yeah, so. yeah the scales are pretty nice i wish i wish planters had that yeah that <laughs> makes it a yeah. lot easier yeah. look at the shank here and stuff and i guess show the concept here it looks like we've got an opener a row cleaner gauge wheel shank and burmers is that what the, we call those yeah we, we call them closing colders is what we call them okay. just kind of grab some of that dirt pack it back around um berm it up and then firm it up with our closing wheels, our crow foot closing wheels. Okay. Everything is fully adjustable as far as spring pressure, um, depth, angle, everything. So we can adjust it to make it just the way you want it. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a pretty heavy shank. I know we we used a, uh, was it basically the same identical row unit as this? Yeah, it is the same row unit, um, whether it be on the three point unit or the pull type okay. unit here. Yeah, yeah. we had no issues. Uh, we did hit some really big rocks a couple times and we, we did uh, send one up, but I mean, that was to be expected. Yeah, it was uh, they, they are it was auto, actually a concrete they footer. They are auto reset here to you know, protect the unit and yeah. they also additionally have a shear bolt in case you find a yeah. heck of a boulder and we can't trip over top right. of it. So. Yeah. Yep. What kind of configurations does this come in? So like the one we ran last year was a three point and this one's obviously a a draw bar yeah so we do have three point models with the same row units um the row unit also is available in a shear bolt model if you don't have rocks but obviously you have rocks so you have the auto reset but the three points are available in a six row an eight row and a 12 row three okay. point okay and then in the pool type configuration like you see here you can get a 12 row or a 16 row and then there's also different carts you can get the dry fertilizer set up a liquid fertilizer set up or just the strip till bar with no fertilizer on it Okay. So do you have many guys running just, just strip till for? We do have quite a few guys that are going to run just just the strip till. They lay down some strips in the fall and come back and... Just for the tillage play. aspect? Exactly. Okay. Yep. So Garrick, to, to monitor this fertilizer, to make sure we're getting our right rates, mapping and everything, what are you guys using for that controller? Um, we are using a Raven RCM system um, for the rate controller. It controls both products and, like I said, two sections um, to divide the unit in half. Okay. Um, pretty standard rate controller. Exactly. Yep. It'll come up, well, populate on your ISO screen and um, work with pretty much any tractor. Yes. Yeah, so like right now, we're running an Ag Leader display. Uh, if we were still using, I don't know about deer, they don't play nice with theirs, but <laughs> I think it would work on a deer display. It will work on a deer display. Yep. yep. Okay. And then uh, is there any kind of blockage monitor if we 
happen to plug one of these fertilizer yeah, tubes? Yeah, so we we have the Vism um, row blockage monitor here. Um, it is a Bluetooth system, so if you get a block um, for a rock or whatever plugs a row unit, you'll get an alert in your cab saying row 15 is okay. blocked or whatever it may be. So. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I noticed on the tanks, they're on duels. Is that the is that going to be the primary config, or can you get bigger tires if you want them? Or I guess um, you really wouldn't want bigger tires for your berms. But. Exactly. So right now we are going to run um, duels. They're 380, 90, 46 duels. This is going to okay. be the standard configuration um, okay. for now. And on the hookup side, looks like we're using five remotes. We got one for a hydraulic jack. Kudos to you guys on that. That was that was a good idea. Yeah. And then one for up and down, one for, it's one for fold? One's for, yep. So we got one for up and down, one for fold, um, one to run the meters, and then one for the air fan. Yep, yep. How long, uh, how long has this design been in the works? Like this is a pretty, I like the design of it. I mean, it looks very similar to a planter bar only on steroids. Yeah, exactly. It folds similar to a lot of planters you see on the market. Um, we've been working on this bar for a little over three years now. Okay, so, okay. Um, the first, first, launch of it really yeah, exactly yeah so this is the first launch of the um the raptor here um we're going to production and um hopefully get a lot of units out in the ground here yeah this spring when will uh when will this be available for order any idea um these will be available for order this fall okay so yeah one thing about strip till it takes a lot of power last year we pulled a 12 row with a 380 horsepower challenger but it was a three point this unit is a lot heavier so uh we're gonna see what the what the deer will do we might need some more power after this but we're going to put it in the ground it's really tacky we're not going to do anything other than a test strip but i guess we will see some see some dirt fly maybe or a tractor blow up i don't know <laughs> right, so we got chris in the tractor we're just going to walk beside and we'll actually take a look at the units what they're doing i really don't know that we're going to have enough power for this i am going to tune this tractor i just have not done it yet but we'll see this is just a test run. He is going to blow just a very small amount of fertilizer through the system just to make sure everything is working. But this is not going to be a full rate. We're not going to get, do much. Hey, we're pulling it. Now the tractor's singing pretty good. It's definitely a little too wet, but. For this purpose, I think this will work. You can see this this disc up here is just slicing the ground. Our road cleaners are moving our trash out of the way. And here's the fertilizer coming through too. This is our gauge wheel. Eric, our gauge wheel here, it's basically just floating, right? I mean, yes. That's what's controlling the depth it of the unit. It works a lot like a planter depth wheel where we're able to float up and down to follow contours, small inconsistency in the field, so we're getting that fertilizer at the depth we want it every time. Okay. It's actually working up a lot better than I thought it would. For, for as tacky as it is, yeah, it's um, that's kind of the unique design of these crow feet, both the gauge wheel and the uh, packing wheel, that they're able to get rid of some of that mud and work in some kind of sticky situation. So. Yeah. So we haven't made any adjustments to the berms or anything. This is just how it's how it got off the trailer. We will do some adjusting probably, and you can see it's definitely a little tacky, but this will work for a test run. I'm riding on this pass. We're just basically going back to the bin's gonna quit, but I'm just curious to see how the deer pulls it. We're actually pulling it a lot better than I thought we would. So right now this is a stock tractor. Uh, we're hoping to pull five. If we can pull six, that's great. Uh, there's five. We're, we're, we're pulling. I mean, it's lugging a little bit. Not, we're not dropping our PMs. And this is wet, so uh, this is wet. A little bit heavier dirt, not bad though. Yeah, we're pulling there. We tune her, we'll be able to pull six. Pretty surprised. Now we are pulling a little bit shallower than last year. We are pulling at seven inches. Last year we were pulling eight. Last year we did liquid fertilizer though. This year we're doing dry. So. Yeah, they don't look bad. They look pretty. Well, there you have it guys. There's the strip till bar. This is, it's almost a week later. 
We've got a few hundred acres on this thing, so it's gonna be several videos of us strip tilling in the future. I hope you guys are as excited as we are. It's a very exciting day for Umford. This is the day of the release. This is on the 8th. I'm filming this right now. I know they're super excited. Imagine working on something for years and not being able to tell very many people and now you, everyone gets to see your work. So, real exciting day for them. Can't wait to get the rest of our acres covered with this strip till bar. It's working great, and yeah, thanks for watching. And yeah, we'll see you next one. Don't forget to like the video. Hey guys, one last thing before we go. If you're interested in the Unverfurth Raptor strip till bar, they do have a product release video. They actually just put that out today. I'm gonna put a link in the video description so you can actually check it out and get more of the specs and any other questions or, you know, any other information you might want on that bar. Once again, it was a real, it was a real blast working with those guys. I'm really glad they let us uh, let us in on the project. It was it's fun. It's really it's really a good time to work with someone who's passionate about what they're doing. And yeah, them guys are they were all about the strip tilling.